This is the Fuji GFX the second, not two, but second. It takes everything you loved about the GFX line and improves it. This 102 megapixel camera gives the best of both stills and video worlds. And yes, I said video. This camera has some of the world's firsts in that department. So you're going to want to hang out for this one. Why is this my preferred still camera? First, files are amazing. And this new GFX has the new Fuji X Processor 5, so the already incredible GFX dynamic range has been increased by 30%, with improved 16-bit performance. The eye detection autofocus worked flawlessly for me. And the subject, animal, bird, automobile, motorcycle, slash bike, airplane, and train autofocus has been added as well. I personally found the eye autofocus was tracking perfectly, and when shooting with their new GF55 f1.7 lens, I was able to nail focus with no issues. And this was only a prototype camera that Fuji lent me for this first look. Overall, the shutter feels snappier than the previous GFX cameras. It even shoots eight frames per second at 102 megapixels, which is crazy. And you get eight f-stops of IBIS. I was using all constant lights for this shoot, so when going down to 1 15th of a second, I had zero issues keeping the image steady. In the GFX the second, they have also given it a new base ISO of 80, which comes along with an updated sensor as well. So for video, everyone on set was pretty blown away by the image. And again, this is only a prototype. This scene was lit with a five stop difference between the foreground and the model, and there is detail in both. This camera shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second and 8K up to 30 frames per second. There is a crop when shooting 8K. You can record in 422 10-bit ProRes in-camera, 422 12-bit Apple ProRes RAW, and Blackmagic RAW. And with Fuji F-Log 2, Fuji is claiming up to 14 stops of dynamic range. In F-Log 2, the ISO started at 800, so I'm guessing that's the F-Log 2 base. But this shot of the model's hand dialing up the fan was shot at 3200 ISO, and it's really clean with no noise reduction applied in post. And with this camera's larger sensor, it's the world's first to shoot multiple video formats. You have GF, which takes advantage of the full width of the sensor, and GF lenses, this division, 35 millimeter full frame, and 35 millimeter anamorphic. I also like that you can immediately transition from stills to video mode instantaneously. Cooling and run times shouldn't be an issue on this camera. As I see the back, it appears to have an option for a fan similar to the X-H2S. I didn't test the overheating, but had no issues while shooting, and I only changed batteries once during this entire day of shooting. The body design on this camera is near perfect. It feels really solid, and they have added a really nice texture on the grip. The viewfinder is now removable, so you can use the vertical attachment from the first GFX camera if you wish. And the top screen is slightly slanted for better viewing. I also really love how much information is put on the top LCD when shooting video. So you can keep the back LCD menu free and still be aware of all of your settings. The 9.4.120 frames per second EVF also felt more natural when compared to the GFX 100S. Three custom buttons are added right above the shutter. I love this update. In movie mode, I had the left button designated to toggle between waveform, RGB parade, and vector scopes, which you can program to take full screen. The middle button to quickly turn face detection on and off, and the right button to quickly access high-speed recording. You can program this as you wish, depending on the style you shoot. I also love the two custom buttons next to the lens, which I programmed to quickly access the different boost modes and turn image stabilization on and off. The ports on the left-hand side of the camera include LAN, microphone, full HDMI, and USB-C connection with full power delivery. And on the right side of the camera, you have the headphone output. It also is really nice to have the strap holders integrated into the body and not protruding. It also takes the same batteries as the GFX 100S and XT series cameras. There will also be a grip available for the camera as well, giving it a form factor closer to the original GFX, which I love. The GFX system has been my daily driver for a few years now. 
It's not just that it's 102 megapixels with an amazing file, but also the format when shooting stills is not as horizontal and closer to 4x5 image ratio. This camera also takes both CF Express Type B as well as SD cards. So overall, the shooting experience was just great with this camera. I was even able to test out the new GF55 f1.7 lens, which is a great focal length for environmental portraits, and the bouquet is stunning. You can see examples in these images here. I was really impressed with the IBIS, which makes this camera more flexible in all types of shooting situations. In this video, I was really excited to tell you about the new camera. If you look back at my previous 19 videos on Adorama TV, I'm using the GFX 100S in all of them. And if you're a previous GFX user, you will be absolutely in love with this camera. Also, next month on the Level Up Lighting Show, I will go over the 10 light setup used in this video using Nanlite LED and some of my old Hollywood Moe Richardson lights, which are still running after 50 years. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell for more content just like this. And don't forget to tune in next month to learn about this crazy lighting setup. Because as you know, there are levels to this.